Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello, my name is Drew. Let's get right into today's video. So currently it is past midnight, but if it wasn't, it would be December 5th, which means that it is the day after my 25th birthday. So on December 4th, 1995, the earth was blessed with my presence and it has never been the same since. No, I'm just kidding. I figured that for this week's video, it could be nice to kind of share 25 life lessons I've learned in 25 years. So let's get right into it. So number one is it's okay to not be okay. This quote has resonated with me for quite some time. Back when I lived in Toronto was when it really was something that I often repeated to myself because I was just not doing very well mentally. It was just something that I was able to remind myself I'm not the the only one who's not okay right now and and my situation will eventually get better it's still something that I often remind myself because I'm not always okay and that is okay number two is ask for help when you need it or even when you don't think that you do so this <sighs> I'm truly a stubborn Sagittarius woman. This doesn't necessarily resonate with me in the physical sense. Like when I want to do something physical and someone is trying to offer their advice, I'm really not good at taking it. But when it comes to like mental, emotional well-being, it's okay to ask for help even when you don't think you need it because it's better to get that help and not need it than need the help and not get it. Number three is take accountability for the way you make others feel. I think this is something that I've learned more so as I've gotten older because I know that I can have a negative impact on, on people just like anyone can have on anyone. You need to make sure that you can hold yourself accountable for that and take responsibility because that's the only way you'll improve and you'll learn. Growing up as someone who was bullied a lot in school, the people who treated me poorly, if those people were to come to me and take accountability for the way they made me feel, I would be so grateful for that. And also just knowing how those people made me feel made me never want to make someone else feel that way. Number four is would you talk to a loved one the way that you talk to or about yourself? This is one that has been a little bit newer for me. I was essentially talking about myself to my therapist in a way I would never talk about somebody else. I had called myself an easy target and a disruptive student. She asked me to explain why I felt that way. I said, as for the disruptive student, I was always told I was very disruptive. And as for the easy target, I've always been told I was an easy target. And she asked me why I thought I was disruptive. And I said that because I was never focused in school and I was very hard for the teachers to handle, but that was also because I needed extra help that I was never given. I was wanting to ask for help, but I didn't know how and I didn't receive that help. And instead I was scrutinized for the way that I acted and was never listened to. But that doesn't mean that I end those things. I hopefully from this point forward, I won't allow myself to think that way because I would never call anyone else an easy target for being bullied because of the way that they look or used to look because it's not a nice thing to hear and I would never call a loved one an easy target so why would I call myself that? Number five is don't be scared to stand up for what you think is right. From my perspective, I have never wanted anyone else to feel the way that I felt when I was being bullied. And as someone who has white privilege and is beginning to understand more and more about the injustices that basically anyone who isn't white face, I choose to use my white privilege and my voice to stand up for what I think is right and never be afraid to stand up for what you think is right. Number six is your pleasure is just as important as theirs. This one is getting a little bit on the personal side, but that's okay because I think that just like me, someone who's watching this may need to hear this. I did grow up in, you know, the school system. So female pleasure was never a conversation in sex education, nor was a lot of things. I never felt confident in myself to ask for it. And not to say that that is my fault, 
because you should never have to ask for your pleasure to be reciprocated and you are always, always deserving of at least the effort. If not, I hope that you, and pff, to be honest, me, I hope that you have the confidence to demand that reciprocation or to leave. Have them know exactly why you have left and to not fake it either. Don't fake it to make someone feel good because that's not going to do anything constructive for anybody. Number seven is to make the best out of every situation or as many situations as you can really because I know that sometimes that's a lot easier said than done. This year has been a hell of an example of that. I'm very grateful to be able to see the good in my particular situation. Number eight is therapy can change your life. It can, it may not for everybody, but for me, oh my God, has it ever changed my life? I stand by therapy, I recommend therapy. Therapy has just been such an incredible tool for me this past half a year. I really don't know where I would be without it. I don't know if I would even be here without it. Number nine is never take your health for granted. I think that with everything going on this year, that one is very, very self-explanatory. Number 10 is surround yourself with supportive people. It's really nice to have like-minded and supportive people in your corner. So when you're going through a tough time, you have those people who can remind you that what you're doing Doing is right and that you don't have to change who you are because someone doesn't like it and that those supportive people can remind you of that. Number 11 is you may outgrow some people as you grow and that is okay. I think no matter what happens in life, sometimes you outgrow people. Sometimes the people who you are surrounding yourself with or you rely on for support may not grow with you and that's okay. Number 12 is high school may not be the best years of your life. I was told that when I was graduating high school and it scared the shit out of me. School in general were all of the worst years of my life to be quite honest with you, but high school, high school was a different kind of shitty. When did I graduate? 2013. These seven years of being out of school have been best years of my life. Definitely. 13, it's okay to be sensitive. I have been told my entire life that I'm too sensitive. I am a very emotional, empathetic person. I can cry at a lot of things, like anything. I was always told that I was too sensitive and I couldn't take a joke. It became a negative, false ideology about myself and being sensitive is not a bad thing. I think that oftentimes we need more sensitive people in the world to remind those who are hardened that being sensitive is okay. I'm very in touch with my emotions and my tear ducts. <laughs> Number 14 is educate yourself on the injustices that are happening and support the communities that are facing those injustices. Unfortunately, it took quite a long time for me to educate myself on a lot of injustices that non-white people are faced with. And that's probably one of my biggest regrets in life is that it has taken me up until this year to to learn about most of those things. Just educate yourself. I've always got resources for Black Lives Matter in my description box below. If you're against Black Lives Matter, which you should not be, and if you are, this is not the channel for you. And if you are kind of aware, then just go check out some of the resources in my description box, as well as the other injustices that are happening around the world because there's just so much that people don't know. Another part of the school system that makes me very angry, how whitewashed they made our history. 15, self-care is not selfish. I actually touched on this in my last video, five mindset habits that will change your life. Self-care guilt is very real and it's very unfortunate to have because self-care is so unbelievably important. 16. It's okay to say no and to put yourself first. It's hard. It's not easy. It's definitely not easy to say no. It's very liberating once you start. You are able to start putting things that you want to do first. It just feels good. 17. 
Others opinions about you do not determine who you are or what kind of person you are, nor are the internalized ideologies you're fed about yourself from your peers growing up. This one kind of relates to four. Would you talk about a loved one the way that you talk about yourself? As a growing girl, I was told these things about myself and I internalized that. What I was told wasn't true. It was someone's opinion about me that I thought was something that was factual. I'm really grateful that I had someone to remind me that people's opinions about you are not inherently true. 18, alcohol, partying, and the club scene are really fun overrated. I've always had a negative relationship with alcohol, mainly due to a close family member of mine having a problem with it. Seeing someone you love go through something like that and growing up around it is very hard. I definitely did the club thing. I went to parties and stuff. The hangover is just not worth it. Unfortunately, as someone who suffers with anxiety and depression and unfortunately at times suicidal thoughts, hangovers can really amplify that and it's not nice to wake up after possibly fun night of drinking and just feel extremely anxious. Every once in a while, I like to have like a little glass of wine, partake in a little bit of marijuana, which is legal in Canada. Other than that, I don't know, it's not a daily thing anymore as for weed. 19. Sexuality is fluid, but compulsory heterosexuality is very real. As someone who has been trying to mentally explore their sexuality over the last several months because unfortunately COVID is making it so I cannot physically explore. I've realized quite a bit about myself and I'm just kind of waiting until safer times to confirm those things. Compulsory heterosexuality is very, very real. If you don't know what that is, I'll leave a link to it in the description box below in case you're interested. Being conditioned to think a certain way and constantly be confused about why you think that way when it's supposed to feel normal for you. I don't know, there's something very validating in reading about Compet and and I'm very grateful that I that I came across it this year. Number 20 is setting boundaries is very hard and scary, but the more you do it, the easier it is. This one kind of relates to 16 about saying no and putting yourself first because setting boundaries is so, so important. And oftentimes setting boundaries is you saying no. Sometimes saying no is very scary, but very liberating at the same time. And setting boundaries is not selfish. It's not something that you should be shamed for. It's not something that someone should get mad at you about. Sometimes understanding what your boundaries are takes a little bit of time and that's okay. And once you figure out what that boundary is and you express that, the people around you should be understanding about it. If not right away, you know, not long after you establish that boundary. 21, the more you let your creativity flow, the more creative you get. I just feel like the more I make videos and the more that I allow myself to be creative, the more creative I get and the more that I want to experiment with new things and try new things. 22 is what you consider to be your flaws or imperfections are what makes you unique. I think unique can sometimes be a little bit of a hard word for people to hear and I can understand why some people don't necessarily want to be unique. Some people want to be normal. I don't know. I think as I've gotten older, I've really embraced my uniqueness because that just, I, that's me. If I didn't have those things, I wouldn't be me. And I think that's, that's really beautiful. 23 is you do not need to conform in order to fit in. Be yourself and eventually you will find your people even if your people is only you. I don't necessarily think that you need to have people in order to be happy or to feel fulfilled. It's nice to have people, of course. I think it's the most important to feel confident in yourself and your presence, your own presence. I'm very grateful for the people that I have around me, but I also think that there are people who don't have anyone but are still able to be themselves. And I think that that is so inspirational and so beautiful. So if you're one of those people who feels alone, doesn't have anyone fall back on. Just know that you are so strong and powerful and your ability to not conform to what other people think you should be is so 
inspirational. 24 is your hair is not frizzy or unruly. It is curly, it just needs the proper TLC and products. And I learned that this year after dealing with years and years of frizzy, dry hair that I was not confident in. This is the first time in my life that I love my hair naturally. Mind you, this obviously has products in it and this is also like, I think day four hair. And I also have bangs now, which like, I haven't had bangs since I cut my own and they were up to here on my forehead. And I love it. I just really love my hair. I'm really grateful that I learned to embrace my curly hair and that I did have curly hair underneath all of the frizz and all the unstraightenable strands of hair that I fried over the years. <laughs> Number 25, you are worthy of whatever you desire in life. This is one that again I have been working on this year and even just the past few weeks. This was a big learning lesson for me in one of my latest therapy sessions where my therapist had me write down why I'm worthy of of the things that I want to do and once I read it back to her I was moved by my own words because I'm worthy and so are you and whatever you want in life no matter how outrageous it is you are worthy of that and so am I and just because someone may tell me or you what you want is too far out of reach doesn't make it true you are worthy of whatever you desire in life Never forget that. All right, guys, those are my 25 things I've learned in 25 years. I cannot believe I'm 25 years old. Doesn't feel real. I still feel a little bit like I'm a 24 year old. Like they always say, age is just a number depending on the context of that. Let me know in the comments below which one resonated with you the most. If you guys like this video, please hit the thumbs up button because it really does support my channel and help me get the algorithm on my side as well as hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified about future videos that I will be making, as well as follow me on all of my social media. They're always the pinned comment in the comments, and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Quite literally, like, dripping right now. Just dabbing myself with a Kleenex. Oh, and there's the furnace. Sick. Okay, BRB. Can that fucking furnace turn off? I just, ooh, I got something in my eye.